we believe in the doctrine, for some of you who don't know, we believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. Now, what is dispensationalism? Dispensationalism, it teaches that there are different time periods. And throughout these different time periods, the Lord was working out in different ways. So when you read your Bible, not all the verses are going to apply to you. That's important to understand. There's going to be some verses that will apply to the Old Testament, some verses that will apply to the Millennium, and other verses that will apply to the Tribulation. So when you see a verse that says faith and works for salvation, and then a different verse that says faith alone not by works for salvation, the solution is simple. It's because the faith and works salvation will apply to a different time period. Whereas faith alone not by works will apply to the church age, which is us today. So you are here, as the map will say, right? So that's where you are. Now, we do know this, is that God's systems, His dealings with mankind have changed. Let's take, for example, one of the most important things throughout life. So, we know that throughout different time periods, things have changed consistently. But uh, God's, God's miracles, for example, His visions and healings, and then the speaking of tongues that time. During that time, it changed. Why? It ended right here when God forsook the nation of Israel temporarily and finally switched to the Gentiles. So during that time of Acts, there was a transition of Old Testament and church age, Jew and Gentile. And that is undoubtable when you read the book of Acts. But what did the Jews do? They rejected. So because of that, when it switched to Gentile, God's program with the Jewish people was done. Uh, but what you're going to notice right here is that prayer did not change from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Old Testament saints, they practice prayer just like the New Testament saints. The tribulation, they have their prayer, Revelation chapter 6. You'll notice that. Prayer did not change throughout these different dispensations. You'll also notice that uh, another example concerning why prayer did not change throughout dispensations, but others did, is that what's very interesting is that God's kingdom on how he set things up has always changed. It's switched from physical to spiritual on how he set up the kingdoms. However, prayer did not change. It always remained the same. Here's another one. Baptism, water baptism. Water baptism, you got to understand that immersion, we, the first time we see it is the mention of the book of Matthew, which is like the verge of the New Testament. But prayer was long before baptism. It always carried. Here's another thing right here. Didn't you even know, didn't you even know that the Mosaic law of observing the Sabbath day, that prayer was long before observing the Sabbath day? Amen. Amen. Noah, uh, he, Abraham, prayed to the Lord. Before the Ten Commandments, prayer was there. How about that? Sacrificing animals. Didn't you know that officially, officially, that uh, it wasn't starting until Moses? Now, before then, they were doing sacrifice of animals. But you'll notice that there was a prolonged period of time where the Jews did not do sacrifice of animals, and God said, we ought to get back to that again with Moses. But you know what always continued throughout that time? Prayer. The Jews gave a cry out to the Lord to deliver their burdens. They didn't sacrifice animals, but they were praying. One thing that did not change from beginning to end is prayer. Here's another thing, okay? Didn't you know that one of the most precious things you'll ever have in your hand is the Word of God? Didn't you know that? But guess what? You know what was before the Word of God? Prayer. Prayer was long before the Word of God. We didn't have the complete Word of God in our hands. Until when? Until many years later. And we had the whole book. But prayer was long before. Prayer was long before. How about that? Now in the millennium, I, in the, what you're going to do is that you're going to have to come to God to worship Him. So in that sense, you will be praying to Him. Because you're going to have to communicate and talk to Him. Basically, the point is this, is that what God desires is you, mankind, communicating with God. 
That will never change. That will never change. That remains throughout all of time. No dispensation will divide that. Prayer will continue throughout all of time. So, when in the millennium and eternity, we speak to him face to face this time, right? That's phenomenal. Throughout this time, they're, they're praying in vengeance for their enemies. Over here, we're under the age of grace, so we pray for help and his grace. In the Old Testament, they focused a lot on physical elements, prosperity, uh, physical kingdom, etc., etc. You'll notice that there were differences in prayer, but it did not change communicating with God. It did not change in communicating with God. So here's the thing. Didn't you know that soul winning? Soul winning. That it didn't start until the book of Acts where Jesus gave that command. But what was before soul winning was prayer. So basically, here's my point. If you're going to take all the things that you're supposed to do as a Christian, Bible reading, prayer, soul winning, church attendance, abstaining from sin, growing in knowledge in the doctrine, etc., etc. Let's put anything right here. This one will be the most important thing in your life. If you're going to pick just one, if you only had one choice, you know what I would do if I were you? If you're going to pick all of that, I'd pick prayer. You might say, above the word of God? This might sound blasphemous, but it's very true. Yes. You might say, why is that, preacher? Because even the days of the church age, they, when Christians did not have full free access of the entire word of God. They all had manuscripts and they had to memorize verses. But what never left them was the power of prayer. Amen. Do you know why prayer is more important? Because if you pray to the Lord, he gives you the word of God. If you pray to the Lord, he will give you a church to attend. If you pray to the Lord for truth, he will give you the truth to you. If you pray to the Lord, that he will give you the strength and the opportunity Amen. to win souls. See that? Prayer is what leads to everything else. Yeah. Now, if you, in your life, prayer is the weakest link in your life, you should be scared if I were you. You should be troubled if I were you. And if you win more souls than you've done prayer, if you know more doctrine than prayer, that's something you've got to check in your life. Amen. Good stuff, amen. Yeah. Daniel, let's look at the book of Daniel. We're going to look at chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Notice this was in the Old Testament. How often did they pray in the Old Testament? Verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Now think about this. This was during the time of the Old Testament. And Daniel prayed three times a day. Now think about this. During that time, you had to have a high priest, a human high priest, to go only once a year. And he had to make sure that he's covered under the blood when he goes in front of the temple so that he can speak to the Holy of Holies. But that mediator for the people, we have a better one. That's Jesus Christ, our high priest. And he's going before the throne every day on your behalf when you pray to him. Now think about that. You've got a better access to prayer, more important access, more important opportunity to pray than the Old Testament. And these Old Testament saints, if they pray three times a day and you didn't, that's something you should check in your life. Yeah, that's good, preacher. Now I'm not saying that you all have to make a routine like, like some Muslim, you know, praying five times a day or something like that, facing toward, you know, Mecca or something like that. I'm not telling you to do something like that. But the point is, is that the time and the frequency of prayer, that's the point right here. You've got to do it more than the Old Testament saints. It doesn't have to be a ritualized format. It's like you're just speaking to God as a normal conversation as well. But I really wonder, I really question this church how often you pray. Sometimes I know this. I know that the reason why the Lord blessed us with a lot of fruits is because someone or somebody was praying. We had a member in our church who like prayed like two to five hours every day. And then I noticed whenever he prayed concerning our enemies, 
and concerning the uh, work of the internet and soul saved, Lord just blessed it with fruit like that. Now that he passed away, one thing I noticed is this. This pastor believes that a third of our church's power was lost when that person passed away. You know why? Because somebody was praying the behalf of this church and somebody was not here. So you see that? We got work to do. We've got work to do in praying. We got to spend a lot of time in prayer. Now here's another thing. Let's look at the book of Hebrews. Let me convict you even more. Look at Hebrews 4. Let's convict you even more. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. In the Old Testament, you don't have the right to speak to God face to face. Okay? You don't have that right because God is holy. But now that you got that high priest who intermediated on your behalf, during this time it was a time of law, strictness. And they had to, Old Testament saints had to carefully check their lives when they were praying to the Lord. Carefully check their lives because God was strict. But now you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. You're not under the law, you're under grace. Now think about this. Didn't you know that prayer should be taken more seriously on this one than this one? Do you know why? You might say, why? Because Jesus Christ covered you. So you have more opportunity and freedom for God to hear you out. During this time, God took it more strictly in hearing you out. That's why Old Testament saints were really serious about their works. But over here, because you live, uh, what is the church age called? The age of what? Grace. Grace. You take it, that license to sin, and because you take that license to sin, your prayer, your prayer communication has become weakened even more and broken. And perhaps the Old Testament saints have better prayers answered than you because the reason why is that they took their lives more seriously and they inspected themselves more seriously than you people because Jesus Christ already got you covered 100%. So there's no need to cover yourself. Look at Hebrews 4.16. What, what is this called? Let us therefore come boldly unto the what? Throne of what? Grace. We're under that age of grace. That's why you have more access, more freedom to pray because we're under that grace. And your prayer life is weaker than that. Who would want you to make sure that because you have more power and opportunity to pray at this age, who or what being would make sure that this prayer life would be weaker compared to the Old Testament? Who, what being would do that? Satan. Satan. Let me give you something interesting. Go to Revelation 3. Revelation 3. Let me show you interesting here. Do you know why the Antichrist kingdom has to come? Do you know why Laodicea is the worst age of apostasy? Let me show you. Let's look at Revelation chapter 3. You know, during the time of the church age, we had people during the Great Awakening revivals, missionaries during the missionary movement, and the early days of Christians who suffered under severe persecution of the Roman uh, Catholic Empire and the early pagan Rome that time, they had better prayer lives than we did. Do you know why? Because we're under that age of Laodicea. Laodicea has shutted out God with the power of prayer. That's why apostasy has to happen. Do you know why apostasy has to happen? Because the prayer lives, are you paying attention to me? The prayer lives of the Christians have weakened. That's why we're at the worst day of, of, of apostasy. Don't blame, don't blame the apostate Christians, apostate churches, and the lost people. It's you. You're at fault because your prayer life was weak. You don't believe me? Look at Revelation 3, what it says about Laodicea. Look at verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold nor hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. What is the cause for this? Well, let's skip down to verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Does that apply to you right now? When's the last time you did Revelation 3.20? When is the last time you did Revelation 3.20 where God was saying, let's talk, child. 
No, I'm too busy with work and school and all these things going on, and I've got a ministry to take care of. I'm a Bible-believing preacher, and I have to take care of the members and the people in here. Uh-huh. No spiritual excuse is an excuse to skip prayer. In prayer life, God is saying, can we talk now? And then when's the last time he actually entered inside your heart and you sat down with him and had a little good talk with Jesus Christ? When's the last time? That's why Laodicea happens. Because do you know why Laodicea has to happen? Because he's knocking at your heart and you didn't let him in. You didn't let him in. Why? Why? Because verse 17, 18, 19. And don't tell me this does not apply to you. I know this applies to you. Typical American you. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You're too busy with this. Going 10 seconds per minute and all that. Whoa, it's emergency. Too busy. Stop calling. Whoa. I gave an emergency call right there. Whoa. <laughs> Hopefully that won't get me into trouble. Oh, well. Anyways. <laughs> so we see right here that you'll notice that this thing right here, we just have to go like 15 seconds every day. We have to get things fast, 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 and do it, do it faster, faster, faster. Drive like a reckless train wreck, you know, passing the stoplights, going, going like uh, 90 mile per hour, you know, while we're driving through the freeway, going, <laughs> getting to our destination. Oh, I got to take care of this. Oh, I got to take care of that. Sometimes you're the one that adds the burdens. And you don't need all those burdens. Oh, rich and increased with goods. No kidding. Because of that, that made you uh, lazy and you didn't want to do prayer. That made you feel like prayer is a hard work and effort. You are a typical Laodicean American, and because of that, that's the reason why the Antichrist can come in, the New World Order has to come in, and the tribulation has to happen because it's your fault. That's why Laodicea has to happen, because you lack the power of prayer. That's what we lack. You know how the Great Awakening revivals happened? You know how they started? You're not using your heads, friend. How did Great Awakening revival start? It started with the power of prayer. Didn't you know the first Great Awakening revival, one of the first instances was Jonathan Edwards' sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God? You know what happened after that? They held an all-night prayer meeting. Ever since that time, you'll hear story after story of Great Awakening revivals. Um, think, about, think about the King James Bible. You know how we got the King James Bible today? Because of a prayer of a man who, burnt himself, who got burnt at the stake, Lord Open the king of England's eyes. Think about, um, didn't you know that even the freedom of our country today, I know that it's not completely free and it's controlled by darker forces, but let's be honest, compared to Russia and China and other places, we're living in freedom. And you know how this freedom started? With people who actually prayed to the Lord. Some people say that George Washington was a Mason, but I've dug through all the conspiracies and even research. Actually, Washington, he was a supportive and almost even a Baptist. And Washington, when he knelt on that ground during the Revolutionary Wars, during the, uh, during the cold of winter, he knelt on the snow praying to the Lord. Let's say that he even is a Mason. You want to call him a Mason? Well, a Mason did, but had a better prayer life than you, I guess. And you think that you're all better than the elites and the conspiracies. Yeah. You, pride, you prideful, conceited, arrogant Christians you are. Because you know so much doctrine and knowledge. You think that you're all right with God. You better start your prayer life. That is the most valuable thing. There's another story. I'm going to give one more story. I can give story after story of why these revivals happen. One more story. There was a revival going on at Wales. And they had held constant days of revival. Do you know why? An old spinster, I think past the age of 80 or something, and his wife got together and they prayed to the Lord to send revival at Wales. Wow. Revival came. Elderly people. Do you know what's the number one thing that people overlook? You all get upset that you can't attend church anymore because you got old and hospitalized in bed. You underestimate your power of prayer. You people say, oh, I'm not able to soul win anymore. And... Uh, I'm not able to witness. You underestimate the power of prayer. Some of you in persecuted countries don't have a Bible to read 
and you mourn and you cry that you don't have the precious word of God to read. How often have you persecuted people have been praying to the Lord? This is a conviction for everybody. I don't care who you are, poor, rich, elderly, young, or a rich American who ought to know better, actually, out of everybody. Everyone underestimates the power of prayer. If you're a person who's unable to do all these things, everything of a church, man, I, I want to do what, like, what Dr. Gene Kim does. The devil has uh, blinded your eyes into losing the value of prayer. Now, if you're elderly, stuck at home, you can't read the Bible anymore because your eyes are dim and that you can't talk anymore, you better spend that time praying to the Lord. That is a sermon for every single person.